Yes, Ayanda. Well, a very good morning to you once again, Leanne. You know, the, the whole program this morning is in a bid to, to adjust that because we all know it as the Anglo-Boer War, but it's now being redefined as the South African War, bringing to the fore the role of black South Africans in this war, bringing to our attention the suffering that men, women, children, the elderly, uh, who were both black and white, suffered throughout this ordeal and tumultuous period of our history. So it's, it's quite interesting. We're taking a trip down memory lane, but let's come back to today now, Leanne, I'm sure you know race relations in South Africa still leave much to be desired. Not too long ago, we saw universities up in arms. That Leicester video came to the fore where uh, apartheid uh, and, and racism was brought back into the spotlight. So we're speaking to some young South Africans. One is a student, one is working, but still is a young South African to discuss why it is that years after the banishing of uh, apartheid, we're still having some of those scars and why those who were not around during the uh, war, the Anglo-Boer War, South African war or apartheid are still dealing with the legacy. So I'm joined now by a lady and a gentleman. They'll introduce themselves and tell me exactly why they think that we are still dealing with the aftermath years afterwards. A very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Ayanda. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself for me, please. It's Bongani, right? Yes, my name is Bongani Zwani. I'm a student at the University of Free State. I'm doing LLP. Mm, final year. Yes. The boy. Cool, yes, yes. <laughs> Hang in there. A very good morning to you, Danae. I'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, hi, I'm Danae van Veik. I work as a researcher here at the museum. Now, talk to me about why you think it is that we're still dealing with uh, the the ugly head of racism in some pockets of our society years after we have uh, supposedly should have reconciled. Uh, I and I think it's because remember our democracy is still young. And it was a negotiated democracy. So what happened is, like some of us as student activists and and politicians, young politicians on campuses, we still we still stuck. I can say stuck because some what happened in the past uh, just. Uh, before actually 1994, it's white people of South Africa took whatever they have acquired during apartheid and black, meaning they left with everything. They, they, they never shared, it was never shared. That's why even today students are still fighting for, for transformation. Students are still fighting for equality on campuses. Not only black students, we also have white activists who are fighting this thing. So it's not about it's not about race as such. It's about the behavior of how these things are being perpetuated. In fact, you're writing your exams still because you were participating in the Fees Must Fall campaign. So it, it's affected you directly? Yes, it has affected a lot of students, but as student leaders and activists, and especially from, from SASCO, we've been preaching free education from the beginning, you understand? And this is the time, and if we let our own government at the end of the day to deny us free education, then it's going to be a problem. Students, if you can remember what happened in Tunisia, what happened in Egypt, what happened in 1976 as well, students took the, everything into their hands. And I believe that as South Africans, as students, black, white, remember even SASCO is a non-racial uh, student organization. We are saying to all students around the country, we must sit down, discuss, find a solution of how a child of a, black, of, of a black working class uh, are going to access education at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Danae, there are a lot of concepts that are coming to the fore, things like whiteness, things like privilege and the like. As a young white South African, is this a conversation that you do have with your peers, with other people in society? It is a very uncomfortable one, I might add, but is it one that you do engage in? Um, yes, I think it's very important to um, realise, uh, look at the history, look where we've come from, um, realise that there are people who suffered, um, especially even if you look at this museum. Um, there are people who suffered from the time of the South African War, um, and I think we need to be in solidarity with that and um, try and, and correct the rock the wrongs of the past um, and even looking at this will maybe um, get some courage from this war and um, especially the wall that's now been opened with all the names of the black and white women who died um, and it was actually the women who actually kept this 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 war they were the the real hero heroines of this war um, they they struggled a lot um, during this war and, and they kept on, on on going and they built the nation afterwards and I think um, maybe we as women need to maybe take um, a stand in that as well in the new democracy as as he said, it is still a young democracy, and maybe we should we should try and have our um, voices heard as well, because we are the mothers of the nation. So I think we should also step in there. 
I love what you talked about now, the role of women. And in fact, it ties in perfectly with where the program of the day is going this morning. We're going to take a quick ad break. And when we come back, Minister Natim Tetwa is going to be unveiling a plaque in honor of the women and the children and the elderly who suffered throughout this uh, war. And it is uh, both black and white women and uh, children and the elderly. So that's what, in fact, I think we, let's not take the ad break because this is happening right now as we speak. So, Danae, you were ushering it very well. So I'm going to ask one of our cameras to turn its attention to the particular plaque where the minister, surrounded by a number of key stakeholders and other dignitaries, uh, as well as the representatives of the museum, are getting ready to unveil that plaque and then release the names of those who, who died here, those innocent civilians who perished during the war. This is, of course, a garden of remembrance with all of the names, black and white, of the women, the children and the elderly in alphabetical order just to remember those who were a casualty in this war. It brings to mind, as I said a little bit earlier, that saying that when elephants fight, it is the grass that suffers. It is the innocent, the vulnerable that pay the price. So I'm going to keep my peace for a moment or two and see whether or not we can dip into what's happening at the moment. Stay with us. Immediately after this, the minister will release the doves, this side. And as well as the, the two members of the board, with already here, Mrs. Malulega, and as well as uh, Shock. Yes, M Mrs. Shock. Well, a very good morning to you once again as we're launching Reconciliation Month in December and the build-up of the 16th of December. Reconciliation is the theme for today. It is the focus of all our attention and all the proceedings today. In fact, we're coming to you live from the Gardens of Garden of Remembrance, I should say. It is here at the War Museum in Mangawong in Bloemfontein. Minister Natim Tuetua in the Department of Arts, Culture and Heritage, uh, accompanied there by the MEC here in this particular province of the Free State. There's also the director Mr. Pretorius, who's the director here at the War Museum. And uh, they've been calling, in fact, for a, a renaming of what we used to know as the Anglo-Boer War because it signified that there were only white people involved in this war. But to try and bring history into context, we are now making sure that it is known as the South African War, as black people played quite an important role in this particular war as well. We are standing at the Garden of Remembrance where women, children, and the elderly are being remembered, both black and white. And uh, that's where we're standing at Ladies the moment. The minister getting ready to Can unveil I the plaque. Can we all read on the same page? One, there's going to be the opening of the plaque by the minister and the director. Two, release of the doves. Three, moment of silence. Over to you. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Mrs. Shock is going to read to this audience what is written here. Uit eerbied voor die meer als 51.927 zwart en wit vrouwen en kinders wat in die concentratiekampen oorlede is gedurende die Zuid-Afrikaanse oorlog, Anglo-Boerenoorlog 1899-1902. I put a little machine mararu pudu twenty fifteen, Kelituna le Habane la Bonono le Seto Monghadi Natim Tetua, Hosom Pabasadi, Baba to Baba to Leba Sueu, Lebana Bafetang, fifty one thousand nine hundred and twenty seven, Bashoka heads in the Kampong, 
tsa khobokano ntweng ya Afrika borwa ntwa ya maburu le manyesimane ka selemo sa sekete eh le 1899 to 1902 We now proceed to the release of doves. So what's going to happen is that uh, two uh, ladies, they are going to hold their doves, and then the minister and the director will also hold their doves. Immediately after that is going to be a moment of silence. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is a launch of the Reconciliation Month in South Africa 2015. Mrs. Malulega and as well as Mrs. Shoch. They are going to do that first. I'll count. Once I say one, two, three, you release the doves. One. The other doves. Okay. We're going to start first with Mrs. Spiller and as well as uh, Mrs. Shaw. And then, after, in that order, then the minister will come and also the director. One, two, three. That's a reconciliation sign in South Africa. Thank you so much. The reconciliation month has already started, launched by the Minister of Arts and Culture. So many doves. It's a sign of peace. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful day. 21 doves have been released. Today is a day that signifies the launch of this day. Ladies and gentlemen, We are now going to have a moment of silence. We are now going to have a moment of silence. Can we ask everybody, because we are respecting the departed today, a minute of silence. Please, can we all be quiet? Alose.